Hi all, welcome back to my channel. My name is B. I'm back with a new Unreal tutorial using C++. In this video, I'm going to cover a practical example on how to use the Bezier formula. Don't be scared, it's easier than it looks. For this tutorial, I prepared this simple scene with that cute little cat and a type of mini game to show how the Bezier formula works. So we have those cap swapping around between them and they using mathematical the mathematical formula to, to do the movement. So I'm going to explain how I did that, uh, how can you make a minigame with this type of code. For the example, I have only two elements. A blueprint, which is the swap Bezier controller, which is the element which swaps its cap, and the item to swap which is the element that makes the movement in that way, using the formula. Let's open first the swap Bezier controller. And it's just a controller, so it, it has nothing. It's simply an actor. And the item to swap is just another actor with a mesh to represent the gap. Let's open the swap Bezier controller. The swap Bezier controller is just an actor. I integrated some EU properties to manipulate the speed of each element, the amount of items to spawn and swap, the distance between items, the swap time, and the total number of swaps that the mini game is going to display. I have all of those properties in this section over here. All of them are EU property, so we can edit, edit them on the editor. I also have the item to swap, which is the A item to swap actor that I show shown before. We can see in the blueprint swap Bezier controller that I have all of those elements over here. So I can modify, for example, the items to swap. I can play six, for example, and then I can make the swap time or the animation type for each element faster. And also, for example, reduce the number of swaps for the whole thing. So. The mini game, the way it works is it will swap each element. It will take two elements and swap between them with the Bezier formula. And that will count as a one element swap. So if I have, for example, five swaps in total, it will swap five times, two elements each time. Let's play that again. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six elements. They go faster and they swap five times. Let's go back to the swap Bezier controller code. For the movement of each element, the Bezier controller is in charge of swapping two elements each time. For that, I keep a list of elements to swap and an index list of each element what I, which I'm going to use to randomize which element is going to be swapped later. Here I just have a reference to the index for two, the two elements that I'm going to swap and this is just the items that are that I'm be, I am swapping at that moment. I use this function to detect if the animation move has been finished. So this will be an event that I'm 
declaring on the item to swap. I will show that later. And this is just another function to swap two elements each time. In the begin play, the first thing happens is I spawn each item to swap. I always like to check for those new pointers. Uh, this is a good practice. And I just simply spawn each element and increase the distance between them. This is new. This is an event that I have declared on the item to swap and I'm going to, to use this uh, event to detect if the movement has been completed. This is being traced by the item to swap. And finally, I call this function just to start swapping the first two elements. With this function, I select two elements to swap. Each time, I only swap two elements, no more than that, because otherwise it will be a bit crazy. And this way is simple, and you can really see that the game, the mini game, is working. So it's fine this way. So what I do is basically select two random elements from this item. This is just a, an index of items. If I go to the begin play, I have the list of items and I add each element to that list. And I also keep a, an index and a, a list of index, which will start in zero and it will have up to the number of elements that I'm going to spawn and use. I use this index list is because it's easy to get randoms and it's easy to handle integers instead of the prop the element, but you can use just the element. So I select two random elements uh, on that item in this list and this is just to check if these elements are not the same because I need two different elements each time. So the simplest way, there are other ways to do this, but this, this way works. So I have a while here, and uh, while these two elements are the same, I'm gonna select a different one. So this while is not the best way to do this, but for this tutorial is fine. I have other techniques that I like to use and I'll probably use that technique in tutorial for a different thing. Then I initialized this variable with two elements. Remember, I'm using only two elements each time I do the swap and I get the real index item to swap. This is just a random index on this list and this is the, the, the index. So for example, I will get here two that's the element two in this list. And in real, that will be the, uh, the element that is on that element. And that's because later on, I'm gonna swap these elements and short this list. It's a bit strange, but it works, trust me. Okay, next thing, I go to that index, whatever it is, I select the real element, which is the item to swap. And I call this function, which is animate, which means start making the move. I send the actor lo location of the, the other element, of the other point, and the swap time. That's, the, that's how fast the swapping is gonna happen. So basically, these two elements that I select, I select point A, element A and element B, and I swap between each other. That's why I'm sending for the element A, a I'm gonna send the star location of element B. And for element B, I'm gonna send the star location of element A. And finally, because I have this event over here, as soon as these two element ends the movement or the animation, it will call this function. So first it will call the first one. So I removed one element from the this variable. And when the second one calls this function, it will use this to subtract one more. So I know that 
both elements have finished to, to do the swapping and the animate. And I short those elements, so I I use the index list and I swap both elements, so I will have them in the correct position. Remember, basically what I'm doing is I keep this index list to select random elements each time, but I need to short them uh, as soon as these those elements finished. I subtract one element to the total number of swaps. So I will have 5, 10, 20 elements that I'm gonna swap in total. And when that fin if if this is not finished, this means that the meaning game hasn't been finished. So I'm gonna do the same process. I'm gonna select two elements again and start swapping. So every time I only select two elements and I get the start location of each element and swap that. Let's move on now to the item to swap code. To represent the, that element, I just simply have a root scene and a mesh, nothing else. It's an actor as well. Uh, this is the element that performs that animation using that Bezier formula. Before I continue with the explanation, let me show you how a Bezier formula looks like. So I have this simple graphic here. A Bezier formula is basically two points. It's a line with two points, for example, and a number, uh, an amount of uh, control points that controls the curve. For this code, I'm using this simple one, which is only contains one control point. If this point is in a different position, for example, here, the curve will go this way. For example, this one is over here. The curve will be different one. So depends on the where the control point is. The curve will be different. It had it will have a different shape. For that, I'm using this method. This method takes the start point, the end point, and the control point. And it also takes the time. I will use this in the delta in the tick, so I will use the delta time for that. And this will give me the a position on time based on these parameters. So that animation will take its location with this formula. So this is the lovely formula. So it looks a bit complex, but basically it, it is taking the start point, the end point, the control point, and the time. So it's using the time for for the calculations. I'm gonna link below a uh, extensive explanation of how the Bezier curve works. But basically, I have here a graphic where I can you see how more or less works, and basically. Taking the time, that formula will give us these points. So in this graphic, we can see this is the start point, this is the end point, and this is the control point, which is like around here. And for example, for this time, we have this point. For this other point, we have that position. And that's how it looks like. As I said, depends on the where the control point is, you will have a different curve. If we go to animate, this function is being called by the swap Bezier controller to start each of two elements uh, to animate. This is where I calculate that control point and when I start moving the object. I use the tick to move the object with that Bezier formula. So first thing first is to keep track of the target location. So if I swap in item A and item B, I have the star location, which is my location, the item location to swap location, and the target location is item B location. 
I also keep track of the total time for that animation of that movement. And here is when I calculate the control point. So what I'm doing is depending on the how I'm gonna swap the elements or how are they located in the space, I'm gonna use a Bezier point in one side or on the other side. Depending on how both elements are located, I'm gonna calculate the Bezier point in one side or, or the other. So if I open again this graphic, so imagine we have the star item A and item B. So I'm gonna start with this element. If this element is over here, I'm gonna put the Bezier control point in this side. And if this is, this is the element, the item B, the control point is going to be here. So that's what I'm doing there. Just checking the X location and calculating the Bezier control point. I take the distance because I'm going to locate the Bezier point in the middle of both and I take the offset. So yeah, I simply take the Bezier control point with the star location, the offset, and the, the Y location. We get adjusted to have different curves. So you can do with this whatever you want. You can place these offsets in any place really. But keep in mind that if you take those offsets far away from the both elements, it, you will have weird results. So this way, I'm just taking the middle distance. And this is not the offset in the y direction. It's not really. It it was more like a test and trial. So you can change this and also take, for example, instead of divided by two, you can take the distance. You can have this distance far away over here or closer. So that depends on how you want to have the curve. And. That's the opposite, so I will subtract the offset instead of adding. So I will have its point in different places. And I indicate that I can start moving the, the elements on the pick. I use this current versier time, which I'm using with the delta time to detect if the movement has been finished. So I use the total versier times for that, that it will indicate uh, when the animation ends. And next thing is just use that formula that I explained before to get the new location for the actor. Check the actor location and that's it. If this time reaches this total Bezier time, I reset the current Bezier time. This is important. Stop moving the element completely. And finally send this event. So this event is being received by the Bezier controller and for each element I'm subscribing to that event in the Bezier controller. Okay. Let me show you how you can define this type of events. The syntax is a bit strange. So first thing we need to declare a dynamic multicast delegate with the name f swap item complete delegate. This is just with no params. If you need more parameters for the event, there is another syntax, which is kind of strange. So in another tutorial, I can show that. Okay, next thing is just declare in the publish section, the event. And after that, just use the event this way. So broadcast and the swap Bezier controllers will detect that event and we'll do the swapping again with two new elements. And that's it. That's everything for this explanation. Let me show you again the example. So let's uh, put less element, for example, three. Let's do this faster, for example, that. And number of swaps. Now let's leave it at 10. Okay, and play. And it goes super fast and the cat is completely puzzled. Let's do that again. So what can you do with this? Well, clearly you can do 
uh, mini game that classic mini game where you have a small ball and you have to uh, you have to guess where the ball is when the other person stop moving. So I'll probably make a video about that in VR, which I'm very excited about. So this is all for today's video. If you think this video is useful, please subscribe to my channel and share this video. It helps a lot. And don't forget to hit that bell button to get notifications for future videos. So that's all for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.